Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Well, hello. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access a Trader dot com nightly video hope everybody is doing well uh thank you very much for tuning in we really appreciate uh your viewership if you could be so kind again take a second all we ask is folks if you like what we're doing uh if you like the content if it helps you out on a database uh daily basis the only thing i ask is just be so kind click the like button that's it click the like button share subscribe if you haven't done so already, and again, I'll try to get you through this, uh, you know, this crazy, crazy, uh, great, fantastic, sometimes crazy market, uh, but one day at a time. So we read somewhere, um, I read somewhere, uh, I think it was yesterday, yes, yesterday evening or this morning, um, somebody turned around yesterday and going off social media is, how can you possibly see yesterday coming? And my question is, well, if you have charts, right? If you have charts and you believe in technical analysis, even the most basic technical analysis, you can see that rotation has started, you know, five, six days ago out of technology into, right? Into the Russell, into the Dow Jones Industrial. And you can clearly see the disconnect. It's a very, very clear disconnect. Uh, yesterday, I, I didn't, like I admitted in the last night's video, I had no idea the Dow was up 740 points last night. I had no idea, right? I had absolutely no idea because, again, my focus is on the NASDAQ 100. My focus is on uh, the members of the QQQs and adjacent friends. Um, so I had no idea, once again, that the Dow was up you know, 240 points today. Again, 1,000 points, nearly 1,000 points, technically 900 points on the Dow in the last two days. But I knew very, very well uh, because we were prepared. Again, we knew what was going on in the markets. We knew the importance of last Thursday's engulf engulfing candle. We've been talking about it nonstop. We've been talking about the deep out of the money puts that were coming in on many, many names, uh, especially in the semiconductor names. And the most important part was that it never sidetracked us from other bright lights. Okay. I knew the Nasdaq was down 500 points today because the correlation of the action and the selling really played it out through the bets that they've been making for the last two, three days. If you guys remember, I think it was either last night or the previous night's video when everything was just flagging. You guys remember when everything was flagging and I said, hey, you know, look at NVIDIA, right? Look at NVIDIA. I said a couple of days ago, it's been flagging. They're starting to come for the 125, 124, 122, 120 puts, right? You guys remember this conversation, right? We were talking about Amazon. You know, Amazon lost this whole range here, right? It's starting to lose this whole range here again, over and over and over again. We talked about AMD, right? What happens if AMD starts losing the five day, right? What happens here? Again, they're starting to come with puts. And yesterday, somebody came and bought 10,000, right? 10,000 of the weekly. 165 puts. That was $1.5 million worth of premium. So you can see from, if you, if you are a person like me that's heavily invested in one lane, like we talked about in last night's video, and don't get distracted by everything else, you saw the warning signs. You saw the technical damage. You saw the deep out of the money call buying by the institutional money flow to tell us what's about to happen next. And this morning, uh, you had ASML come out with earnings. Um, and ASML was not good, right? Was not good. Uh, ASML got hit. And just like we talked about the semiconductors, they let us up, right? They let us up basically for the last year and a half, two years. And this damn thing really, really you know, let us down today. And when you woke up this morning, you had the SMHs, they were down well below the 270 area we talked about. You know, all these stocks that we've had these big out of the money, short term, uh, deep in, out of the money puts that were coming in, they all paid. They all paid because, again, the most important part is when you're trading retail stocks and you're dealing with 
random symbols, okay? It's retail. That's all it is. It's retail. When you're dealing with institutional money flow and they're all betting in the same direction with the same strike, with the same short-term expiration, there's a higher probability that outcome is going to take place because that's where the money is, right? That's where the big money flow is. And we saw that play out very, very aggressively today. And when you woke up, the majority of our pivots today were gone, man. I mean, gone. I mean, blow it up. So we had to do the best that we could today, okay? And it was pretty good. It actually played out very, very well. Uh, we'll get to the pivots in a second. But speaking of price action, tomorrow the Bulls have, you know, kind of another chance to, let's see if they could put up a fight tomorrow. Let me give you guys levels that are very, very important, okay? So... The NASDAQ 100 now is below, you know, forget about this whole range that we lost here today. We are below the 50-day moving average. The next support for the QQQs is right here around the 79.40 area. So you're talking about roughly another $2 uh, on the Qs. Tomorrow morning, you have uh, Taiwan Semiconductor reporting. And then tomorrow night, you have Netflix reporting. So they're, they're, they have a chance to kind of at least save the narrative, save the sentiment. But I could see a scenario tomorrow that, very, very possible, that if TSM disappoints their numbers, we could definitely you know, open up in the 7940 area. Very, very possible bulls defend the 7940 area. And then we, we, we bounce, right? We have a dead cat bounce. I could see that scenario. However, I could see the opposite scenario as well. Because there was technical damage, and now for the last three days, we basically engulfed about three weeks worth of buying, I could see a scenario that TSM comes out with earnings, the initial reaction is good, because the sentiment is so soured, I could see everything going red, losing today's ranges, and then we get a move, a natural move into this magnet 7940s level as well. But right down that 7940s level, that is going to be the next a uh, battleground for the bulls and the bears. The question is, you know, how do you approach tomorrow's day? I have a very specific approach. My channel is very, very specific. There's no room for interpretation. There's no room for a debate. I don't need to uh, ask opinions from 200 different traders. The chart is telling me what's about to happen. If it confirms, fantastic. If it doesn't confirm, you know what? There's nothing else going on there. Noise is noise is noise until you get a valid confirmation. Uh, very, very important option flow that I saw that piqued my interest today. The notable ones, the notable ones. There was a massive buying spree today, massive, okay? They were coming in today for the weekly 115, 116, and 118 weeklies, right? The 18's printed because we took the pivot, got down to 16 and change, not the biggest pivot in the world, but they were coming in very, very aggressively for the 15s, 16s, and 17s NVIDIA weeklies. Another big buyer came in for next week's uh, 110 puts. So watch NVIDIA for tomorrow, right? Especially if there is um, if there is um, another wave of selling for tomorrow. Again, there is a shot it gets down to the, to, the, to the 115 area. The reason why they were betting the 115s that represents the 50-day moving average. It probably holds the 115 level tomorrow at least one time, just because the 50-day moving average is kind of a big deal. Um, so the, the battle test area tomorrow, if it tests 115, the bulls should defend, right? They should defend. But if we can get a short off prior to that and going into the 50-day moving average, that would be great uh, as well. Uh, but here was the bet that really opened up my eyes for tomorrow. If you guys remember, yesterday we talked about Meta held on to the 50-day moving average. You guys remember that? And I said, well, you know, if this thing loses the 50-day, that could be a problem. Here's where a buyer came in. Here's where a buyer came in. Uh, first of all, there was a buyer yesterday that came in. If you guys remember on last night's video, the buyer came in for the September 485 puts. That was yesterday. 3.7 million. Another buyer came in a little bit later in the afternoon. A buyer came in for the for the eight, uh, excuse me, 445 weeklies. Okay. 445 weeklies, roughly about 900, 950 grand. Again, granted, this is another 17 points. Let's keep an eye on meta, right? Let's keep an eye on meta. Today you could see 
Uh, this is obviously a close below the 50-day moving average. That's not a good thing. But if Meta could lose today's channel, you can see how it stopped perfectly on today's daily channel. If it starts building below today's channel, yo, let's see if that 445 buyer uh, gets paid off. So it's very, very important to watch that. But this is another one that is definitely, definitely on my... I mean, listen, I trade Tesla every single day, right? This is this is like, you know, this is like choosing, you know, between Tesla and Tesla. There's no, there, for me, my favorite five stocks of all time was Tesla, 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 Taser. If you're old enough, you remember Taser, right? Taser and then the video, right? So... Tesla, it held the bottom range here on the 10-day moving average twice. That's not the big story. It actually held up fairly well today. The big story is there were buyers coming in from mid-morning to all the way throughout the afternoon. And this is very, very notable. They were coming in for the 245s and started pounding the 240 weeklies, okay, with size. You know, they, they weren't coming up with 10 grand, 5 grand, 8 grand. They were coming in with size. Guys, I'm watching Tesla tomorrow, okay? Well, I watch every day, so this really, that's not really a news, news flash. But if Tesla loses the 10-day moving average and it confirms the last two days channels, guys, look how much room we have down. There's a lot of room down. Again, I'm not saying it's going to do it. Again, I have no idea. I'm not trying, I'm not in the guessing business, but I'm damn sure watching it. So if it loses the last two days and confirms the 10-day moving average, especially with those institutional money flow, they're coming in for the uh, 245s, and the 240 weeklies, we could have some, right? We could definitely have something on our plate. So again, very violent day. Uh, this was the biggest move down uh, in the NASDAQ 100 since 2022. For you guys who weren't trading in 2022, that was bear market, right? We were down like 30, what, 30, 35% on the NASDAQ. So pretty heavy statement. Again, the continuation or the disconnect continuation of uh, stocks, uh, that have nothing to do with technology. Money's pouring out of technology, going into pretty much consumer cyclicals, smaller cap, mid cap names. But again, don't care about those, right? Don't care about those. My lane is technology. So let me give you guys some ideas. First of all, let me give you, let me get, so let me show us the pivots uh, from today. Uh, snow, I don't believe snow confirmed. If it did, I totally was watching it. Uh, snow 132.20. No, it's, for snow is still no still oh I like snow I definitely like snow in the next couple of days if it doesn't confirm if it starts confirming down oh look how tight this channel is but it didn't confirm today uh Amazon got smoked uh Amazon 190 83 and the pre-market low is of 190 20 if the current confirms can flush more here was Amazon got absolutely destroyed right so here is the whole you see this whole 90 83 level guys Right, it lost this whole 9083 level, confirmed the pre market lows, went all the way down to uh 86. Really, really big move there. Um, GameStop, we sold last night, got to almost 30. So, basically, my whole thing was for those of you guys who sold 30 into that last push last night and are looking for a re entry, GameStop basically needed a 2883, needs to build for a potential of last night's highs. GameStop gave a nice little move today. It actually held up very, very well. So it took out it took out the, the 28.83 and went all the way up to back to 30. I mean, really, really good move. Again, for all you guys who traded it today, a great job. I mean, really, really good job. That 30 level in the future, in the next few in the next few days, or in the future, is we a very, very big level. If, if the market could stabilize a little bit and game start stop starts getting above 30, it could start reigniting. Oh, I'll watch it. I'll watch it again. But again, not not, nothing really in my concern. Um, 250863 uh, on Tesla, never confirmed. Uh, so here, yeah. So we took, I, I got short NVIDIA a couple of times today. I shorted NVIDIA off the 18, uh, off the 18 level, went down to like 16 and change. Again, keep this in mind, we were shorting this thing down nine points already. So I took some cash flow, got stopped out, and then we were shorting it uh, off that 19 rejection, came down to like 18. Uh, 17 and change, covered some more, and then got stopped out. I didn't want to keep it overnight because tomorrow we have uh, TSM in the morning. The last thing I want to do is wake up and have uh, my short up five points in, against me. But nice, you know, nice little trade there on the video. I still like it for tomorrow. Uh, IWM, uh, you know, had a monster move. You know, 
took out the 222, went down like, you know, 50 cents, nothing big, and then reversed back again. Russell continues to be a uh, super duper strong. Uh, and that is about it. So, oh, Google, Google, I'm sorry, I totally forgot about Google. Google 18330, if it builds below, uh, can flush more. Here was Google. Right, so here is the 180. Here's the one. Here's the whole channel here. You see this whole channel here, right? Once it got below, it just got absolutely smoked. I went all the way down to 179 uh, and changed. So tomorrow, again, I am prepared on both sides. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of names uh, that I am watching that has nothing to do with beta, but I am watching. Obviously, my the value for me to the downside is tomorrow on beta. But let me give you guys some names that have nothing to do with beta in case the market continues to have strength in other areas. Herbalife. <coughs> Remember Herbalife? Right? Uh, Herbalife is trying to come out of this channel here. Keep an eye on this thing for the next couple of days. That looks pretty good. Look at Gilead, right? Gilead, uh, again, very, very close to busting out of this whole daily channel. That looks good. Uh, Occidental Petroleum. Very, very close to reclaiming back the 50-day moving average. Keep an eye on that. Archer, Daniel, Midland. What is coming out of my mouth? That's what you... I'll keep it PG. Uh, keep an eye on this thing, right? Keep an eye on this thing. Looks like it's ready to bust out as well. Everything else for tomorrow, like we discussed, I'm watching the video continuation, watching meta continuation, watching Tesla if it could confirm. Uh, Apple maybe takes out two days worth of ranges. So again, it's the... It's the, uh, it's the uh, the tale of two markets, the tale of two cities, Charles Dickens reference. Uh, let's see, right? Let's see what value we have for tomorrow. Uh, but the most important part, guys, I say this every single day, you don't need to trade every single day, but if you do, you better come prepared or stay in bed. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great night and God's help. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.